Duke Passage, Surf, Sand, and Little Sobriety. But spring break isn't just for college kids anymore. High schoolers are going south of the border for a drunken good time. What brought you to Cancun? Alcohol? Oh, I did way too many. Yeah? But I love it. I wouldn't want my daughter to come here by herself. Parents, if your kids want a week away, watch this first. spring break meant thousands of college kids descending on Fort Lauderdale to bathe in the sun and drink up the beer. Well, that was then. Now the hot spot is no longer Lauderdale, and as Matt Mahar tells us, some of the participants are frighteningly young. Here's our investigation. Kids don't drive to spring break anymore, they fly. And the new hot spot is Cancun, Mexico. Young people from all across the U.S. now take over this resort during March and April. They come for the sun, they come for the surf, but most of all, they come for the booze. <laughs> Unlike the beaches in Florida and Texas, the drinking age in Cancun is only 18, but it doesn't really matter. It seems anyone can get served. <laughs> The drinking is typically casual during the day, but when the sun sets, that's when things really get hot. Are you all ready to party, right? Are you all ready to drink a lot, right? Young people getting a little crazy at spring break is nothing new. College kids have been doing it for decades. But now they've been joined by high schoolers, 16, 17, 18-year-olds, out for a full week of non-stop, anything goes, partying. How much you drink tonight? Oh, I did way too many. Yeah? But I love it. I'm still going. What brought you to Cancun? Alcohol. What school you go to? Back to high school. In Cancun, it's hard to tell if the spring breakers are from colleges or high schools. And the big problem is nobody cares. Not the kids, not the cops, and certainly not the bartenders. During a week in Cancun, we never saw a bartender ask anyone, no matter how young they look, for identification. Do you ever get ID at any of these places? No. 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 These three high school seniors are from so, Kansas City. Now, very cool, calm, and collected right now. What are you going to look like six or seven hours from now? Probably not very well. <laughs> Probably unconscious. Cancun is a graduation party without mom and dad along. And they know they can trust me, and I do a lot of traveling on my own. But you know, back home in Kansas City, your parents wouldn't let you stay out at a bar till four or five o'clock in the morning. So we right. didn't take them with. <laughs> no, that's, that's why they're in Kansas City. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we came here. They look younger every year. But Carol is, Butler works for the American the Consulate the in Cancun. She says that most that of the young people who come to Cancun uh, don't get into trouble, but there are spring. plenty uh, who do. And you've got young people who can't mm -hmm. drink at home, mm -hmm. or can't drink legally at home, mm -hmm. and can drink very openly mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And they do. And it makes for trouble, doesn't it, sometimes? Uh, sometimes. They're more vulnerable to trouble because they aren't in control, you know. Um, and I don't think they're aware of the positions that they put themselves in. You know, getting in cabs alone at night is not a smart thing to do. Most of the spring breakers get around Cancun by cab. That's great for cutting down on drunk driving accidents, but take a look at how these cab drivers are sexually harassing these girls and trying to get them into their cabs. Officials say last year during spring break, there were five reported rapes. Was there too much drinking? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I think all of us were pretty much drunk. Susie Cook um, is a senior at Westfield there. State College in Massachusetts. Last year, she and a friend went for a walk on a beach directly behind one of Cancun's hottest night spots. She says two Mexican men in uniform with guns stopped them and demanded money. When her um, friend went to get the money, to go get the Susie money. was raped. And the man just kept grabbing my arm and pulling me back a couple feet. And then he finally um, looked at his friend and they said something to each other and started laughing. And then his friend left and then he, the man took me into like woods and that's where it happened. She reported the rape to police, but there have been no arrests. 
some computers down here, some upstairs. Michael Brennan is a guidance counselor at two private high schools in suburban St. Louis. He says despite his warnings, every year he sees students take off unchaperoned for spring break. How often do you find kids that come back from this, this dream vacation and it was something far less than that and they have problems to deal with? I think uh, the, the overriding uh, kind of thing is is a kind of shock shock at what they've seen shock at what uh, uh, they've seen go on and and uh, you know what they've had the opportunity to participate in themselves uh, shock at their peers Brennan says many of the high school students who go on spring break will have their first experiences with alcohol drugs and sex experiences they may not be ready for you're really opening up a, a lot of problems for them that that they're just I don't feel really capable of, of dealing with. I wouldn't want my daughter to come here by herself. I'd want to make sure that she was chaperoned well. Carol Butler says there are a lot of things kids and parents don't realize. Things like their health insurance won't be accepted for payment if they are injured on spring break. Or that if they come down on a package deal, they won't be able to leave until their charter plane is scheduled. Mom and dad should know that, They need right? to know that, right. right. These are things that people don't think about. Mom and dad should know where their kids are. We get calls from parents who want us to find their kid for some reason, which may be important. And we have, what, 40, 50,000 students here, and I can't find them. How much pressure do kids put on their parents saying, you know, everybody else's parents are letting them go? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, and, it's, and it's the battle they fight from September of the school year on. And to the parents, I would say, don't fold. One of the philosophies that I go by is, is to choose your battles wisely. This is a battle you want to choose. This is a battle you want to get into. This is one that you don't want to relent on, uh, just because of what the potential consequences are. This is such a scary report, but Matt, for crying out loud, what kind of parent lets their high school kid go to a foreign country? Thousands of them, Deborah, and probably mostly from very good families. But the pressure that these kids put on their parents, they convince them that everything's going to be okay, and probably for most of them, it is going to be okay. But uh, do you want to take that type of risk with your child? No, no, I think we've got proof to the contrary. It's not okay. Great report. Thank you, Matt. And there is lots more.